Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights brought to you by the Allegheny Health Network and St. Vincent. I'm Jay Pushkar along with Mike Fenner this evening. And Mike, the 25th anniversary of the Erie Seawolves baseball season begins with their home opener this evening. There is a lot of buzz regarding the amount of talent on this year's roster, mm -hmm. plus former Seawolves catcher, now manager Mike Rabello is excited to be back in Erie. His first season as the manager of the Howlers beginning the campaign. The first of three versus Trenton this weekend. No score on the second. Matt Manning making his third start with Erie. Rashad Crawford hits one to right field, brings home Angel Aguilar, and a 1 0 lead for the Thunder early. Same score to the fourth. Here comes Josh Lester and changes this game completely with one swing of the bat. His first home run of the year. We are tied at one. Manning taking down five batters through five innings of work. A very strong start to his season. Now, could Erie get the bats going? Next inning, Erie. Putting up a crooked number here. Isaac Paredes singles to left. Derek Hill going to come home to score one of the three new Seawolves in the starting lineup. A 2-1 lead for Erie. And the Wolves adding to the lead here on the pass ball. Makes it a 3-1 advantage as Paredes comes home. And then more good fortune here in the inning. It's Daniel Panero gets the RBI single to center. Cody Eves going to touch him home. Erie ahead 4-1 at this point. Bottom of the sixth. And Hill sending this shot to center field. That's going to score a pair. He went 3-5, for five, 2 RBI in his Seawolves debut. Erie pads their lead at 6-1. to one. And next batter, it's Paredes with the two-run blast. Topping the Erie Insurance Arena, 8-1 to one lead for the Howlers at that point. Everything going for the home team. Erie with 12 hits on the night, 11 runs. Matt Manning earns his first win in double-A. And Erie wins the home opener by thumping Trenton, 11-1. to one, The team's first win in a season opener since 2013. That was fun to watch, you know, especially after the first time around. I believe we punched out six times. And then, uh, you know, we started throwing up some runs, you know, pretty quick. And that was uh, it's fun to be a part of. I think um, I got a lot of early contact. I think I got ahead of most hitters. Um, walked a few more than I wanted to, but I had some good efficient innings. It felt good to get here and uh, pitch against someone um, as, um, with a different organization and just get some um, other uniforms in there and just um, kick off the season. It felt good to get the first one out of the way and then just to see the boys out there have success too is it was really exciting to see everything come together for the team and hopefully we can keep this rolling. On the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, starting pitcher Matt Manning was terrific for Erie going five innings, giving up one run, one hit, picks up the victory. Same two teams at it again on Saturday, 1.35 afternoon first pitch at UPMC Park. On the Major League Diamond, game two between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. This one was scoreless until the bottom of the seventh. Jung Ho Gung smacks a double to left field. That brings home Josh Bell as he slides safely into home. Buckos get on the board at one to nothing. Next inning, Adam Frazier somehow sneaks this double in to fair territory. J.B. Shockwood's cross home plate as well. Pirates are back to the 500 mark. They shut out Cincinnati on their home field, two to nothing. Over at Progressive Field, dramatic finish to this one. Indians taking on the Blue Jays, scoreless until the third. Tribe catcher Kevin Plowecki smokes one deep to left field and gone his first hit with the club. And how about it? It's a round tripper, one nothing Cleveland. Top of the fifth. Freddie Galvis changes all of that as he sends a moonshot to right. Jays taking a 2-1 to one lead, but will jump to the bottom of the ninth, tied at two, and welcome back Carlos Santana. He sends everyone home happy. The walk-off home run for Santana, and Cleveland comes back to win this one, knocking off Toronto. Three to two. Gannon University welcomed back a familiar face to its coaching staff. Yeah, they certainly did, Mike. After days of speculation, former Gannon women's basketball head coach Cleve Wright was officially reunited with the program this morning. In front of administrators, coaches, school officials, and alum, the university introduced Wright as its new women's basketball head coach. Wright returns to a program where he coached from 2002 to 2013. Six years ago this month, Wright left Gannon to become head coach at Miami, Ohio. During his first stint at Gannon, Wright piled up 233 wins, led the Lady Knights to the NCAA tournament five times with trips to the Final Four in 2010 and the Elite Eight in 2013. It's one thing to take a coaching position, but for Wright, it was all about coming home. I don't think in coaching you can ever get comfortable, and I think I did say that word earlier to somebody, and mm -hmm. really, uh, to clarify that, I don't think when you're coaching you're ever really comfortable. Um, coaches are never really satisfied. But if there can be anything that's comfortable <laughs> about any place, uh, there is some comfort in being in a place that you're familiar with, a place that you believe in, a place that you want the best for. We are put on this earth to serve others, to put others first, okay? And I pray that, that I'll do that individually, 
but also that our team will do it as a team and as a program. And uh, and clearly, you, you heard in the press conference, the athletic department is doing that also. So that consistency and having that uh, viewpoint and coming from that, that stance, um, it, it's exciting. It just is. Among the many coaching awards on his resume, Wright was named the NCAA Division II Coach of the Year and the Atlantic Regional Coach of the Year in 2010, plus was a three-time PSAC Coach of the Year winner. On the NBA scoreboard, compliments of Lewis Fitness and the performance. Cavaliers continuing their West Coast road trip. They're taking on Golden State. It's definitely not a finals rematch by any means as Golden State leads at 32-23 to in the first half of play. The Ontario Hockey League priority selection draft begins on Saturday morning and there will be zero suspense to who will be the number one overall pick. The Kingston Frontenacs are taking 15-year-old forward Shane Wright. The draft gets underway Saturday morning at 9 a.m. The Otters picking third in that first round. Meanwhile, Erie Otters defenseman Jamie Drysdale and 22 other players have been invited to the Canadian National Men's Under-18 team roster for training camp. Players will practice next week in Finland for five days and then travel to Sweden for two pre-tournament games. A final roster will be made before the World Championships began on April 18th in Sweden.